You've waited a lifetime to look better and feel better, and now here's your chance. Fitness Friday on WNDB. Call 239-0033 and have your questions answered on health, fitness, and a better life. Fitness Friday is brought to you by Bodies by Tasso and Company, 1140 West Granada Boulevard in Ormond Beach. And now, here's your host, Tasso Kiriakis. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, everyone. Well, it's a lonely day for you and I, David, here in the studio by ourselves. Hopefully, there's a lot of people listening out there. I hear somebody down the hall there. I'm not sure who it's it is. It's a ghost. Oh, you think? There's a ghost of salespeople past. Uh, <laughs> maybe well, it's a founding father. Might be. A founding father who is here to celebrate the 4th. Well, I'm excited to be here, and I think we'll have a nice show today. We're going to hopefully have a what I think is a first. I don't know that Bill Elliott and Chase have been on the on the same interview at the same time. It's, uh, they still might not. They might call in at different times because they're both right. going to call in. So um, I'm very excited about that. You know, I have a very special relationship with those guys, and uh, have had a special relationship with Bill Elliott for many Let's years. Let's pretend that people have no clue who you're talking about. Bill Elliott, I think everybody knows Bill Elliott. A NASCAR legend for many years. When going, he's in, into, going into the Hall of Fame, hopefully this year. Good. And what, uh, for many years when he's in Daytona, he comes into your facility. You work him out, keep him. You know, they, they, the argument is, is NASCAR a, a sport? Are these guys athletes or are they not athletes? They're athletes, man. I'll tell you what. Listen, Jimmy Johnson, uh, you know, people don't know enough about Chase yet, but Jimmy Johnson is a great example, so, you know. Jimmy Johnson He's before the 500 right? fi before the 500 ran like a half a marathon, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think Chase was telling me up in uh, up in um, Dover or somewhere they were racing. He went on a 75 mile bike ride the day yeah, before. Yeah. You know, th these are things that these are well conditioned athletes. Oh. You know, there's, there's a lot of well conditioned people who aren't athletes. Yeah. Okay, and and that may be where these guys fit. But these guys train hard. Sure. They have great eye hand coordination skills. It's no different than than playing racquetball or yeah. tennis or handball or uh, football or baseball. You know, in Charlotte, they do a 600. I think that's the longest race, a 600-mile right. yep. race. And, you know, it's, and it's hot. They don't have air conditioning yep. in these cars or power mm. steering, for that matter. That's right. Man. They, they, they work hard. So, you know, I, I, you know I, don't, I don't buy in. I've never bought in that thing that these guys aren't athletes because uh, they put it on the line they, and they get out there and they get after it. And I'll tell you, everyone that I've been, had the pleasure of training has always worked hard, always desired to be in better shape. And uh, some of them don't like the intensity that we train at, you know, uh, but Bill's one of those kind of guys. You know, when we train the professional athletes like football players or track or the basketball players who trained over the years, you know, those guys will go away for their season or they'll go away for their uh, – they'll go back home where they're from. And they come back, and we've got to take a step back and start their training all over again from the standpoint of their weights and their resistance. And over over the twenty something years I've trained Bill Elliott, I've never had I can take his card out like he were was there last last week, and train it like he'd missed four or five days of working out. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That's how how hard he works, staying in shape in yeah. his own in his own uh, environment and that. And uh, it's the same thing with Chase. You know, good uh, good standpoint for that. But you know, I wanted to uh, real quick. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit uh, about my sponsors here on Fitness Friday. Uh, because I think it's very important. I have some a little bit of research stuff that I want to talk about in, in the world of fitness. But the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Lorenzo Fon uh, for his sponsorship over the years here of the radio of the radio show for us. It helps us bring the show to you. And Dr. Fon does a great service to people mm -hmm. with what he does. You know, it, it goes everything from stress reduction all the way up to uh, working in the community and helping me with community events that we do. And whether you have, whether you're undergoing cancer treatment, have run into problems with your energy levels and things, he he is he has been he's gone to uh, Andy Anderson in, in uh, Houston, been specially trained as a as a acupuncturist to work with people who are going through cancer treatment. If you have a traumatic injury, you know this week I had one of my athletes who had um, d during the course of one of their competitions near the end of the year had gotten injured on a hamstring, came in. Um, you know, we started him on a training program that was working from that standpoint. Sent him to Dr. Fon. A week later, he's back functioning like he'd never had an injury before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I look at I look at friends like I I've, I've had the pleasure of talking to someone last night that came in and gave me a report from their doctor, and he said, you know, he's he's down 30 pounds from when he began his program. This is, this isn't a short-term miracle game plan. This guy has been with me now for a little bit over a year. It hasn't been one of those things that the guy walks in the door and does everything right the first time. You know, he has come in and he has gotten um, 
He's, he's lost 30 pounds. He's been taken down on a few medications. He's there for the long journey. He's there slow and, 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 and steady to, to win the race. You know, during the course of time, as he's, as he's had things flare up, I would send him to Dr. Fon for, for little treatments, you know, stress, that type of thing. These are the things that, that make a great partnership. And now Dr. Fon has introduced me to another physician who we're going to have a great partnership with, I believe, is Dr. Michael Dimayuga, who was on the radio show with us last week. And Dr. Michael and I will be soon starting a a program that is uh, a weight loss program using, using uh, homeopathic uh, supplements. Uh, it's a new it's a new thing for me. I'm actually when I get done with my surgery in three weeks, I'm going to I'm going to get out and uh, do the program myself because I don't want to endorse something that I don't do. So mm -hmm. we look. Let's start planning for now. September, we're gonna we're gonna introduce this program. It's gonna be an eight week program we're gonna do with Dr. Dimayuga, um, and it's and it's unique in because his philosophy of of eating is the same as mine, thermic eating, is we don't want to deprive ourselves during weight loss. You know, if we're going to keep off weight for long-term uh, time, we want, to, we want to get that weight off, and we want to keep it off by taking in calories. We don't want to go down to six or 700 calories, which waste our muscle, ruin our metabolism, and that type of thing. So from that standpoint, we want to make sure that we, we really work hard from the standpoint of, of delivering this message over the next, uh, over the next three weeks. In September, we'll be beginning with that program. The second sponsor that I want to thank very much is a sponsor of the We Can't Give You a Stressless Life, but We Can Give You Stress Relief and a, and a Stressless Chair. And that is Kalen's Home Furnishings, uh, Rod Gould and, and uh, Lenny Frazier. They have come in as a great sponsor of this, this promotion of the club. And we have the stressless chair that is at the club for you to try out. It is, a, it, is a, it is an awesome investment to make in that chair. It's a very comfortable chair. Ergonomically, we've had uh, Lloyd from that company talk, talk to us about what goes into it. We're going to be giving away a $3,000 version of that chair. It's going to be given away in uh, August 15th, the 18th, whenever that date falls on that, on that Saturday. And we're going to be giving that away to our members who are referred the most members. But we have a great membership promotion. If you mm -hmm. join, you go into a drawing. If you refer a member, you go into a drawing. And people are winning $25 and $50 gift certificates along the way uh, to places like Carabas and Outback and great. Vince Carters and things of that nature. So we, we greatly appreciate the sponsorship of those two great sponsors and uh, allowing us to have it. And the last thing I want to do before we go to this great interview that I'm uh, excited about is that we – we are now having, as you heard, Biz, we came to the show, the $5 promotion. $5 will start your membership. That $5 starts your membership. You're, uh, you pay a $20 card fee. You're off and running with your membership, and you're billed $39.50 a month for three months. It's a three-month membership. Gives you the opportunity to see what we do at Bodies. Discover the Bodies difference by virtue of how we, we introduce this membership. Think about this. There's no fear of long-term commitment. There's no fear that you can invest a lot of money and fail and be committed to something. This is a three-month game plan. It starts for only $5 with your $20 card fee, and you get to move in the right direction in your health. You know, by October, November, you can be in a lot better shape. You can have your attitude uplifted. You can feel great from that standpoint with our great staff and the things we're doing. It also includes in our Fitness on Demand program our appointment with fitness program and the smart start program that drives around, as well as our sci fit program for burst training so with that with that thing call six seven two six four six four leave us a message we'll call you and get you in but let's bring a very good friend of mine into the into the studio with us on the on the phone hey bill how you doing today I'm doing well. How about you, Todd? Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, listen. So, uh, so it's been a pretty neat week to have you and Chase down here. We've, uh, we've, we've sort of had to balance who gets the attention, you or Chase. You know, we've been beating him up a little bit more than you, and you get your beatings near the end of the week because you're not racing this this race. But uh, it's been a, it's been a nice week uh, here that you've been down and uh, enjoying Daytona, isn't it? Well, it has been, and I mean, we enjoy coming to your club. It's never, you know. Over the years that I've known you and what you've been able to do, especially for me and now Chase and watching him kind of mature and grow and do what he does, uh, that's been fun to watch. And, you know, you do an excellent job from that standpoint. Hey, you're a good salesman on the radio, too. I've been listening to you. <laughs> and the pitch is out and the hit is off it's a home run so, but hey bill let, let's uh let's talk a little because we don't have chase on us talk about him a little bit how how much has this caught you by surprise because he really has been sort of a sort of uh exploded on the scene with the two wins early in the season he's been pretty much in contention at every race with the exception i think uh 
there's been two races that uh, some people got into him or he got into some people and and that uh how's how's it been watching it and how's that sort of caught you well it's definitely caught us by surprise you know napa came in with us earlier this year we went to junior motorsports and all that entity has been very good for us uh we've had rocky ridge uh trucks come on here of late and you know it's been a it's been a really a fantastic season pop you know it's all about the people that put all this together you know the fan support's been fantastic all the napa stores have been really supportive of, of our program and you know, with Chase winning at Texas and then coming back the next week and winning at Darlington, especially for not ever being at those racetracks, it was fun to watch. You know, uh, Texas was just unbelievable. And then uh, then we went to Darlington, and that was something that kind of out of the story for us. But you know, he's run well every week. Uh, we had a little bit of a rough week last week in Kentucky, but, you know, Daytona is a whole different animal. You know, we'll come in here tonight and see how things fare out. You know, always restrict the plate race. It's very, very tough, very hard to figure out. Uh, you know, it's all about positioning yourself and getting the, the correct help at the correct time. You know, we, um, you know, the, he's been on Daytona's track twice. He's been in that ARCA race that he ran, and he ran fairly well for most of that race, ran up front in the top five, and I think ended up back in ninth or tenth or something like that. And then in the um, and then the in the race uh, on the next the next day the nationwide race the next the next week when he ran that he uh, he ran he ran pretty much in contention but he got he got out there all by himself there and learned learned about don't get out don't get out of line no matter how desperate you are to go but really he didn't have a choice he really had to make a move to get to the front then at Talladega he ran fairly well uh, and. Um, and and um, he he just uh, got someone got into him or he got into someone I can't remember how it happened but that sort of screwed him up and uh, put him back in the back there and he worked his way back up through. What's he learned from those two lessons? Do you think he's going to bring and how did he practice yesterday? Well, I think he did well yesterday, Todd. And I think one thing you got to understand is this whole sport is, you know, like I said, it's about positioning yourself. And you know what happened at Talladega was. Uh, Ryan Blaney and uh, whoever he was racing there, I can't remember who it was, got together, and then Chase was kind of a victim of that. And, I mean, that's what restrictor plate racing kind of brings to the table. It, it, it's a very, very much a double-edged sword. you got to be able to to work who you need to work at the point in time. And, you know, you, you also you got to have a pretty good car, but car isn't everything. It, it's like I said a minute ago, it, it's like a high-speed chess game, and I can't even play checkers. <laughs> hey, listen. Getting off the topic of chasing you for a minute, you know, earlier in the season, earlier in the year, uh, Richard Petty, the Danica Patrick whole thing. I didn't get a chance to talk to you about that, but he made a comment that was pretty interesting. He says, he says, you know, she she might win at Daytona or Talladega because you never can do who's going to win a restrictor plate racing. But he, but he, uh, he, he. Uh, he really didn't say much about her driving. I don't want to get into that. So, but what do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about that comment he he made that almost anybody can win at restrictor plate racing because you know it's just so damn unpredictable. Well, I mean, in a lot of ways, uh, so it holds true because the standpoint of plate racing is is all about positioning. It, it's just like what I keep saying over and over and over again. You know, it, the strategy of where you end up. You know, a lot of Good cars can fall out during the day, being wrecked, uh, whatever, and end up being where, you know, if you can hold it to the floor, it's not necessarily about handling. It's not necessarily about a lot of the other little stuff that goes along with the, with all the other racetracks you go to. It's all about just who who can you help or who can help you, you know, achieve where you need to be at the end of the race, and you know you can. You know, you can have two good guys contending for the win, you know, and a guy way back can can get some help and graft by him and, and win the race. And, and I think that's what he's alluding to. And that's what we've seen in the past time and time again the last few years. Yeah, we've we've seen some, some winners that you know, uh, uh you know, I go back to Derek Cope winning winning way back when. I don't even think it was restrictor plate racing then, was it? I don't even remember. Yeah, it was it was plate racing at that time. Yeah. Uh, that was the race that Earnhardt uh, cut a tire down going into turn three, and you know I think I wound up third or fourth in that race, or third, I believe. And you know it's just like I said, you, you know being in the right place at the right time. I mean, I had 
I ran good here, in, I know, in 97, and, you know, Earnhardt got in a wreck, which Gordon off turn two, and kind of set up a caution there, and then I ended up getting beat by Gord, you know, so. Yeah. That was, it, it was, that was that last it, minute caution, was that big wreck coming down the front stretch, and you, you had a great car that year, and I'm going like, oh, man, why did we get that caution? Bill had to say one. <laughs> yeah, we could. You know, I could have got back some, but I don't know if I could ever got back to where I needed to be. But it, it just makes it very tough. I mean, the the things that you do and you learn, and you just gotta you gotta put that back in your memory bank and keep coming back. And and like I said, you know, the odds are on anybody at these races, and you can't count anybody out. You know, I got excited. The phone was ringing there, and, I, and I've been telling people, I, you know, Chase was supposed to call in, too. I don't know what his schedule looks like this morning, but I said, I thought this was going to be the very first interview where both of you were on the phone together. Uh, I don't know if that's happened. Have you guys been on a on a, on a, uh, on a, on a, on a uh, studio together yet? Uh, you know, I don't even know, Todd, though. I think probably so at some point in time, but, you know, uh, if it has, it's been a while. Well, listen. I, we have a good friend calling in that you uh, you know you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him into the conversation just because I, I I texted him this morning and said, hey, I know you haven't gotten to see Bill because they've been really busy, but uh, Robin Hanger from the car shop in Holly Hill. Robin, welcome to the show. Hey, Bill. Hey, Tasso. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you guys? I'm out shopping, and getting getting stuff for our church for uh, for the fourth. So, good. I'm doing good. Uh, you guys are really on a roll. Um, I told Tasso the other day we were talking, and I said, uh, uh, "Make sure when Chase comes to town, you, you get him in the boxing ring because he's gonna have to start learning how to box." <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Ro- hey, Robin, we had the gloves out the other night. Yeah, <laughs> but he, good, good, he was, good. But he was too tired to keep good. his hands up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, he's really on a roll, and uh, he's really impressive. Um, definitely. Uh, Definitely, I know it makes you proud, and uh, and all of us too. So, I mean, just just going really well. Well, we just hope the Napa number nine does what it needs to do tonight, and uh, you know, if not, just have a good, safe race. You know, whoever wins, you know, uh, it, it'll just kind of be a, a, a one of those kind of races that you never know what unfolds in front of you, and you just got to take what you can get. Yeah, yeah. Well, he. He's definitely got uh, the right training behind him, and uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. And and uh, it, and if he needs any support, when if we get out there and rough him up a little bit, Tasso will be right there. He he can he can box with the best of them. So <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's what it. I understand. He can scrap with anybody. So. <laughs> Yeah. Right, my scrapping days were over, I think. <laughs> Bill, I got an old friend of yours that works with me now that started working with me right after you came down the last time. He was uh, he was one of the, the main people in your fan club back in the day, and uh, he's dying to dying to see you. So if you're out and about and you can stop in, I don't know what your schedule is next week, but um, anyhow, his name is Alan Gamble. He's out of uh, Osceola, Georgia. Yeah, oh yeah, Alan, yes sir. Yeah, tell him if I don't get by, I'll say hello, and uh, I'll be in there at one point in time and see you guys. All right. Well, we appreciate it, and uh, certainly the best of luck to us tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll get around to see you. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, Rob. Hey, so, Bill, I, I have a couple more things I want to ask you. Is, uh, number one, is, it, is, is how, hard, how hard is it on you? Um, when you have the opportunity to spot for Chase, I mean, because you know they they had a little excerpt of you uh, coaching him on the road course, and uh, and it was really it was really sort of cute the way you did it because you know you didn't go like hey listen this is what you need to do you said like hey, well I don't know it's your car you're driving it but that number twenty two up there is leading this is what he's doing <laughs> and you know how how because you really you can tell you really gave some thought into how you were going to coach him because you you didn't want to come across as the dad telling the son what to do how hard is that on you. Well, you know, I usually spot on the late model side when we've been doing that over the past number of years, but when it's got to this level, I don't spot anymore. Uh, Earl Barber spots for Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car, and the cup side spots for Chase and the nationwide side, and I don't, I try not to get involved. Earl was in California for the non-companion race for the nationwide and the cup last week or the other week at Road America. And, uh, the cup was in uh, Sonoma yeah. at that time. So, and the thing about a road course is you need multiple spotters because, especially for America, it's a racetrack that it has four miles long, isn't limited it? Limited visibility. 
So that's the thing that you got to look at, and and I just was trying to help out. So um, the the other the other thing is is how how is it how is it with uh, handling Cindy during all this? I bet she's a because I remember one time we came down to see Chase run at New Smyrna, and. Uh, and we came down, and I, and I looked at Sydney, and I go, I said, are you okay? And she, said, she was just sitting there, just, you know, Sydney's not the one that usually doesn't say much, but she looked, you could tell she was concerned, boy. She uh, Is she doing better watching him run around that, that those tracks? Well, I, I think as time goes on, it gets easier. I mean, we're in a good environment. You know, the safety has come a long way the last number of years. And, uh, I think that's the important part of it. I mean, I would rather for him to be here doing the than somewhere where I don't know what he's doing. At least I know where he's at, what he's doing. Yeah. And he's, he's in a good, controlled environment with a lot of good people around. And, I mean, anything can happen, and that's true in anything we do. But but I feel I feel good and confident, with, especially with the, the people that are around us day and time. Bill, you know, um, the, the final thing, because I know you got a schedule you got to keep – the final thing is, uh, I, I I was really sort of shocked to see Napa come on board after after the way the season ended for them last year, the things that went on, and I think that's just a testament to uh, the integrity and the reputation that you bring to the table. And that they knew that uh, that Chase is cut from the same fabric, and I think with the Hendrix boys being involved in, I think uh, I think that that did that deal surprise you that uh, that you got such a such a huge sponsor to to sponsor the nine um, for for the nationwide. Well, you know, God works in weird ways, and I think that was a prime example. I mean, things just kind of happened. You know, we ended up here and decided not to come back for this year, and, you know, we were kind of very disappointed with that because we spent a lot of time with those guys, and they've been very good to us. Uh, and then this deal kind of came about, and, you know, it took everybody involved. It took Mr. Hendrick. It took Dale Jr. It took Kelly. It took, you know, me, Chase. Uh, Cindy, everybody to try to help them understand that this was a good opportunity for them, and I think they understand it. And you know, like I said, we've been—it's been very well received, and we've been trying to, you know, make sure that we continue forward with the program and do what we need to do, and, and that's important. And you know, keeping them where they need to be, because I mean, really, it's important, you know, to have a automotive uh, part companies like Napa be involved in in car racing because that's just a perfect fit to me. Right. It is, it is. So and um you know Bill I you know I I I love having you as a friend. You know, I I've told you that many times and uh but I just uh you're a great guy. You're a great representative for the sport and you know I um I look forward to uh hopefully being in Charlotte for you being inducted in the Hall of Fame. That's one of you know, I've uh, dreamed about. You know, I've 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 dream, I've watched those NASCAR shows when they brought these people in. And I just would sit there and go, boy, I just can't wait to the day that Bill Elliott's there. And I want to I want to be sitting in that crowd, even if I got to wear a monkey suit that night. I want I'm, I want to be in that crowd, and you know, I I know it's going to be a special night, and um, I, I think I think it would be a really special night if that happens this year, and and you know, Chase be the rookie of the year in nationwide, and you be inducted in the Hall of Fame. What a what a night of memories that would be! I, I I just pray for that and hope that's uh you know maybe even there's a championship in in his future this year the way he's been running you know it's a great opportunity to get back on top and I, you know there's a lot of people in Daytona you know Daytona sort of we Daytona's adopted Chase because you know I I have a lot of friends here and uh, they know how much I love him and you've done a great job with him I, I I tease him about being the monkey climbing on my machines all the time and you know we've had some serious conversations we had some fun conversations for him and. Uh, I think I'm sort of like the weird old uncle with him. <laughs> well, you are. You've got a special friend, Otto, and I mean, it, it's meant a lot to us and the whole family, and I think he's, he sees that, and you know, he really enjoys, you know, that's all he talks about, you know, two or three months back, you know, can we go to Daytona early and work out with you? So it's been a lot of fun, and I mean, whatever happens, happens on his side, and, uh, you know, you won't have to dress up much to be in your monthly suit if you come to the to the Hall of Fame induction. I'll just say that. <laughs> I'm into that. Hey, hey, I can't wear my, I can't wear my shorts and my fancy stocking I got on right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Well, y'all have a good day. Good talking to you, and uh, we'll see you soon, Toss. Hey, Bill. I'll talk to you later about uh, about us getting together tonight and watching Chase uh, win. All right, sounds good. See you guys. All right, bye-bye. All right, take care. Hey, that's the father of the Napa number 9, Chase Elliott.
and uh, Hall of Fame racer, and this a uh, this a pleasure to be a friend of his. What a blessing for me to ha have had him in my life. You know, it's a funny way of how I met him. My Sunday school teacher was his publicist way back in hmm. the 70s and 80s, and when Bill got hurt and came down here, I was fortunate enough to be the guy with my brother's guidance to do some rehab work on him, and as I've become a better trainer, I've uh, been able to use a lot of those skills with, with uh, Bill and yeah. develop quite a friendship. You said it you're well over 20 years. Well over 20 years, yeah. Back and I remember it was a big secret at one time, though. You wouldn't tell people, you know, when he was in the club and it was kind of Yeah, you know, because, hush -hush. because you know something that I, I knew starting out very young with, with Bill is that he was he was a great person and he was a good friend. And, you know, I, there were times I had opportunities to go to – autograph signings and he would be literally mobbed because as popular as yeah. junior is now that you know 17 times in a row i think bill elliott has been the most nascar's most popular racer mm -hmm. and you know uh, it, it was just i wouldn't want to i didn't want to prostitute that friendship to the for for business you know i just uh you know even this interview we had today was uh, it was about the friendship and the feeling i have for bill elliott as a person and his family I, I i truly feel that bill's family is part of my family and i truly feel part of bill's family and uh i love that i don't want to you know someone someone as a friend of mine said why don't you have chase come sign autographs with bill at the club i said i'm not going to do that we're not going to uh, make that a show people are not there to work yeah people well, that work people that work walk in that club that are members of the club and see bill or chase working out you know what? It's just such a special experience for them to be able to say, "Hey, that, there's Bill. How you doing?" I think yeah. for the funniest story is is that once it was a kid that from Spruce Creek, uh, great kid. I, Trey, Trey was his name. I can't remember his last name. Went on to the um, West Point Academy, and he's sitting riding a bike, and the two life cycles are facing each other. He's riding a bike, and he's sitting there. He looks at the he looks at Bill. He goes, "He says, sir." He says, "Anybody ever told you you look like that race car driver, <laughs> Bill Elliott?" And Bill just smiled. He goes. Nah, I heard that a few times or so. And he says, there's a reason for that. And I said, Trey, that is Bill Elliott. And he goes, and the kid got red. You could tell you're just yeah. so excited to be in the same room. That's, that's just a, a yeah. body's difference kind of experience that you have. Hey, listen, we've got to take a break. We've got Jim from Fit and Daytona coming in because we've got the new edition of his uh, magazine out on the, on the racks. So we're going to take a quick break. Jim will be with you in just a minute, and we appreciate it. Remember. You can get started at Bodies with a three-month membership for $39.50. That's $20 a month less than our normal rate. But we're doing this to prove that there is a difference in what Bodies does and what Bodies brings to the table for you. $5 starts your membership, $20 card fee, and $39.50 a month for a three-month membership. No long-term commitment, no fear of failure because there's a great team there to help you. We'll be back in three minutes with Jim from Fit in Daytona. When I first started practicing law, the technology of the day was cruise control on our cars, answering machines, and garage door openers. Things sure have changed. Today there's the internet, cell phones, and Twitter. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. As time has marched on, we've changed with the times to better serve you and connect with you. ForThePeople.com is your consumer website and available 24 hours a day, every day, to serve you with a live chat. Or if you wish to speak to an attorney, all you have to do is dial pound law on your cell phone. That's pound law or pound 529. Being connected to you has allowed us to better serve you and more importantly, to be here when you need us most. You never know when an accident or an insurance claim is going to arise, but know this, we're here ready 24 seven. Morgan & Morgan on your cell phone, pound law or pound 529 or forthepeople.com, connected to you. Offices Orlando. My mom has been there for me every day of my life, celebrating my big moments, making me feel better when things didn't go quite right, and always taking care of me. Now she needs me to take care of her. She's had a good life, but her doctors have done everything that can be done. Her pain is getting worse, and she needs more care than any one person can give her. I want her to live every moment of life as well as she can feeling happy, feeling loved, surrounded by family and friends, cared for by people we know and trust. And when the time comes, I want her to be in the best place there is, where they'll have a plan that caters just to her special needs, where it feels comforting, like home, where she'll get the very best hospice care. Because she's my mom. She deserves nothing less. Choose Halifax Health Hospice. 
When the best cars, teams, and drivers work together, they end up at Daytona. When the best workforce and electrical contractors work together, they deliver unmatched value on every design or installation job they touch. We're the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 756, and the North Florida chapter of the National Electrical Contractors Association. We're the Daytona of the electrical industry. Go to NECANET.org. That's N-E-C-A-N-E-T dot org. It's 9.37 as Fitness Friday continues. I don't have, you, you want me to officially bring the show back on? Or? No, no, that's okay. We're back. Hey, yeah, we're back with that. Fitness Friday. It's yeah, uh, July you. 4th edition. We're uh, very thankful for a great interview. Just have my friend, uh, Bill Elliott, sort of like my, my younger brother by 11 months. So uh, it was really? great having Robin from, uh, from the car shop in, Orm- in uh, Holly. I'm, let me tell you, honest guy, great guy. Uh, he's just a wonderful person in what he does. Uh, he's great in the community. He's a, he's he's very active right now, supporting our other friend John Penny, who's going to be running for mayor, and I think will make a great mayor for Holly Hill. And being a resident, being back in Holly Hill, I'll be voting for my friend John Penny, uh, and and hopefully you guys will, in Holly Hill will go back and do that early and often. <laughs> so listen, we're going to bring a friend of mine in. Uh, I've become a good friend with uh, Jim from Fit in Daytona. Jim, welcome to the show again. It's a sort of getting to be a real regular thing having you on the show with me when you uh, launch your, your next edition. <laughs> Absolutely, and thank you for having me. Happy 4th of July to you. It's awesome. Same to you, buddy. I appreciate you. I uh, appreciate what you're trying to do in the community, you know, um, and I see I see some stuff going on. You know, before we get talking about the show, I want to uh, – I want to I want to – I've read a research article that just came out, and I want to I want to mm-hmm. share that with the with the listening audience. And the reason I want to share it is because I think it I think it has a lot to do. Part of it is uh, a lot to do with uh, what you're trying to do in your magazine. It's called a uh, okay. premium non nasir. It says translated first, do no harm. The Latin phrase premium non nasir is moral injunction of the Hippocratic oath, and the title of a brand new peer reviewed scientific paper published in the Journal of Trainology. There's an all-star group of authors, including James Fisher, who is a good friend of mine. I showed you a picture of him, uh, I think, when I came back from Minneapolis, who is from England, from Southampton, uh, Solent mm-hmm. University in the United Kingdom, Matt Brzezinski of Princeton University, and a guy named Bill Simone, who is Optimal Exercise, who publishes a, they've published basically what's a manifesto for in favor of safer, more intelligent exercise. And you know, you and I have had a lot of discussions and, uh, and, and what's going on in the fitness industry, which I don't want to, you know, get into that that conversation right now but their thesis is that exercise professional, professionals must move away from the prescription of dangerous and unproductive exercise and migrate towards safe result producing evidence-based exercise surprisingly many of the popular trends that fitness enthusiasts are flocking to number one have a high risk of injury and number two are actually less effective in terms of producing fitness results an important point is the risk of injury and lack of effectiveness has nothing to do with proper form as proper form and and a dangerous exercise still constitutes a dangerous exercise. The authors quote, there is no right way to do a wrong thing. Of course, by definition, exercise should improve physical health and function, not present harm. In the words of the authors, the vast majority of exercises, even well-intentioned exercise, are missing out on the benefits of resistance exercise. They make a powerful statement. Indeed, this is the possibility of corrected Perform, correctly perform resistance training, not to slow down aging, but to reverse the aging process. And what I'm going to do with uh, Darlene, Nanga- I always want to call her Nangano, but uh, little blog dress, I'm going to send this to her so she can actually post the, the actual article on, on, the, on the body's Facebook. And um, but I think it's interesting because what, you, what you're doing with your paper and, and, and your magazine and trying to bring people to uh, just the realization there's other people fighting the same battles to stay in shape as them, uh, it, the people who are ones that are clicking in and putting their um, their profiles in there, like in that one section of the magazine that they can click their thing, they're extremely fit people. And, and, and the intention really of your magazine was to just get people aware and conscious that there are other people that could motivate them out there. And, and there is many different ways to, to exercise in that. And, and my contention is always that it doesn't matter if people do yoga, Pilates, they run triathlons, whatever it is. Resistance training should be a basic foundational part of their sh- of their of their training, and and there should be a prescription that says we need rest, we need recovery after we have the stimulus uh, to make sure, and that's what we're trying to educate people to. So we we encourage a safety of exercise. 
Absolutely. How's, how's that? How's that fit to what? I mean, because your new issue has uh, just a, a plethora of different people. In fact, a guy that we're going to be doing a research topic with, Dr. Michael Demayuga, is going to be featured in your yep. upcoming one. So, tell us a little yep, bit about yep. the July magazine. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, that, that's that's a very interesting article, and and, and, and I agree with most of it. Um, and I think resistance training is good for anybody of any age or any gender um, at any time in their life. So. Um, I think that's a very uh, interesting article, and of course, as you said, in this day and age of uh, fitness trends, that may not be the most popular article, but uh, you know, I applaud them for, for, for putting it out there. Um, that, that's probably an interesting read. Um, as far as the July issue that you just mentioned that came out, um, we actually had this tremendous response uh, to the um, cover of it. The cover has our yoga contributor, her name is Dana. And we took her down to International Speedway Boulevard, right in the middle of the median, underneath the Welcome to Daytona Beach sign. We did that at 8 in the morning. We waited for the traffic lights to, to uh, hold up traffic, and we, we caught an amazing shot of her in a yoga pose underneath the Welcome to Daytona Beach sign with no cars in the, in the shot. Um, everybody seems to love it. Um, and uh, we, we have featured many people in it, um, as you've mentioned, local people, um, local um, fit people. And our big highlight this month was we had a fitness interview with Chief Mike Chitwood, which was great. Yeah, well, I'm sure you know I, that yeah, he's I, very fit. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, during the interview, he had mentioned to me that he did 18 marathons in his lifetime, which is impressive. Yep. And, and, you know, he, he talks about the FBI Academy that he was a part of, and he was always, you know, he was, a, he was, he was an athlete when he was in, in high school and that. And it's, it's, very, int- it's very interesting because I, I, it's funny. Before I even knew he was in the magazine, uh, when I was moving last week, we were coming out of the Brickyard, which if you look, it seems like the Brickyard shows up a lot of places as the favorite cheat meal for a lot of these Daytona <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it because it's a great burger. You know, Rennie, Rennie's, Rennie's like me. He's a little eccentric, and he's a little weird. He's a little loud. He's a little funny, you know. But I love, I love Rennie down there. But, you know, we, uh, well, I, took, I, I had six kids uh, that helped me move, and I took them down to the brickyard to treat them for the great job they did helping me move. And as we're walking out, here's Chief Chitwood walking into the brickyard. And, and, and what's he doing? He's coming out of his car. And he's putting all his workout gear into his tr- into his truck, and I go, I said, Chief, I said, I said, you know, I understand there's there's a police department around here that can protect your car if you're worried about someone s- stealing your sweaty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he just come yeah. from working out. He is, you know, he's got he's got a lot of the a lot of the police force on bikes. He's a fitness advocate. You know, I've always wanted him to come out and work out with us. And, and have the workout where I want him to see that high. But, you know, I'm actually pretty sure that he, if he was in the FBI Academy, he went through it because uh, one of my mentors is a guy, um, uh, Bob Sikora, who actually trains the FBI guys. He's up at Quantico, and, he, and he's handled sales for them, you know, the equipment purchase for them with, with uh, their Nautilus equipment and medics equipment over the years. And, and Bob is a very detailed trainer, but one of the best I've ever seen. And um, he's okay. he's been a big help. Everybody would everybody would always complain when I would go to conventions. I'd come back after meeting with Bob, and I'd bring new things with me. And they'd go like, "Why do you go to these things and learn this stuff from him?" But he, he he's a great mentor from that standpoint. But so he's probably been through the workouts like we do. But I'd love I'd love to have him in there because I think he's a great guy. I think he does a lot of great things for the community. But he's not the only one. You've got you've got some really uh, a lot of clout in there. You got a chiropractor from from uh, yeah, Doctor Kelly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. Uh, and, and when you see that article, that fitness interview with Dr. Kelly, I don't know if you and I have talked about this before, but in that picture, she was riding a bike they call the Elliptigo. Um, and the Elliptigo is a mix between traditional bicycle and elliptical machine. So you yeah. use the elliptical motion to power the bike. So you are standing on it. There is no seat. And, and you are... Um, like I said, pow- powering it to move forward. Yeah, moving, um, moving. And you actually, there's actually a side motion to it as well to get the momentum going in it. There's yeah. a little bit of side because that. Uh, I'll tell you what. What I know about that is that um, that was produced by a, a different company, but Augie Nieto at Life Fitness actually had the opportunity to 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 patent that and and bring it out. It was brought to him, and we, I actually saw it up in up in Franklin, uh, uh, Illinois. 
and um, mm-hmm. and there was a decision made by the Life Fitness Company at that time is that um, we we don't feel like we want to spend a lot of time putting this in, in our home market. And it has not been a big hit on the market because it does take a little bit of skill, coordination, and core strength to use it. But it is a very interesting thing. I had two of them at one time, actually, because Augie had sent you – know, Augie had like ten of them. He sent me two down to try out with oh, people, wow. and I don't even know where it is in my, in my, in my annex of moving and stuff like that. So – um, I think they will become very popular um, once the price point lowers um, yeah. a little bit. Um, right now, I, there's three different levels. Um, I think they start at about fifteen hundred dollars and go up uh, to about three thousand for the top model. Um, so it's not really consistent with the everyday rider. Um, well, I don't, I don't but, know. Listen, you know, when, I went to buy a trek. I went to buy a trek bike, Jim. And the used one was like twelve hundred bucks. So I'm going, oh my goodness! I'm going, yeah. like, man. What happened to what happened to my Schwinn? It was you know two hundred bucks. You got a great bike. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, another thing I want to talk with you about Tasso is um, when I first started this magazine back in May. We are monthly. We are free. A free health and fitness magazine. Um, and I didn't want to start covering local events. I was concerned. Uh, about how many are out there and that um, it would be a lot of work to gather information on all of them. But now over time we are going into our fourth month of publication in the area and local people who are the organizer of local events, uh, local, you know, whether it is a 5K or a triathlon or CrossFit competition, they're reaching out to us and, and telling us, hey, we have this event coming on, can you help us out? And we are now starting to become a resource of the local events each month in town, which is that I don't know of anywhere in this area that has a calendar of events for, for fitness. So I think it's going to be a great resource for the area. Well, you know what I noticed, and the people who are testimonies, I think you've done a, a wonderful job of trying to keep, you know, um, "Quote unquote," a particular fitness center uh, promoting a particular fitness center. Although, although I noticed you had a lot of uh, good fitness centers that are starting to advertise uh, with the magazine. But I think yeah. the, the interesting thing is, is that the people you're getting is you've done a good job of not making it prejudiced towards any fitness center. The people you have in it, because I know some of those people have been members of clubs, like we had we had Steve Steve Robinson in the book. Um, but but um, you've done a nice job of that, so it doesn't alienate people and make them feel like oh well he's just promoting this magazine the magazine for this for this uh, group or whatever. Uh, I think that's good. But you also notice that the one thing that I think is coming through in the message of the magazine that there is an awful lot of your people who are are your standouts and your and your featured people. They're doing it outside. The Dr. Kelly, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, mm-hmm. Doc, uh, Chief Chitwood. And even the um, the third guy was he's a triathlete. Rick lo- Taylor. Rick yep. Taylor. He says he loves to be outside, and that's one of the greatest things he enjoys about it. So I did. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. The only thing I'm gonna say about that, is, and once again, you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, when I decided to um, resign from my job at the university and start this fitness magazine, I was running outside. I was, you know, exercising as much outside as I could, and I wanted to bring that through to the magazine where, you know, people could know that, you know, one day a week you could step out of the gym, um, you know, and and enjoy the the beautiful scenery of the area that we live in. I've mentioned to a few people over the course of the last three months that I grew up in Pennsylvania where it is cold and miserable. So to be in Florida is a really, uh, it's a treat for, for us. And um, on that same term, there's, there's, I think, last last magazine, you had a, a workout in a park that was sort of a best-kept secret, and then you also have another one about a nature walk and things to do on the nature walk in there. Yep. Yeah, that one uh, was inspired uh, by my father, um, who is a uh, retired state trooper. Um, I actually uh, spoke with him about the FBI training. He had a little bit of knowledge of it himself, uh, he, my, my father actually was in the Secret Service. He guarded President Reagan. Um, so he's had some of the, the most elite training in the country. Um, and he he found that park, and he was like, you, you got to cover this with the magazine. It's a, um, it's a local park up in Ormond Beach by the High Bridge, uh, High Bridge uh, uh, Road up there. And, man, it is, you step out from, from the city and the beach, and, and it's like you're in the jungle. It's great. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Um, you know, the the other thing that I, I do I do want to express one uh, one concern I have, and and I and it's from an, an article that I read that, uh, last night, a research article that was done, actually by a French a French woman, <coughs> and and the okay. title of her uh, research, and I, I just think this is a a neat thing to convey across uh, because you know the people you know usually what happens to the people who are really fit they're the ones that really like taking their selfies and and all that kind of stuff to show off their bodies i mean like on the back page you got like four people they're extremely fit super, super uh, yeah. and, it, and it says uh it says uh young slim sensual and happier what women are like according to the advertising world and this uh she's a doctor of sociology from the university of basque in, in spain and she talks about how she one day was walking through um and she was at a bus shelter, and the bu- between the bus shelter, advertising she saw in the mall, and advertising she saw when she actually went to sit down and eat, uh, it portrayed women that y- if you're not slim and you're not fit, then you're not happy, you know. And uh, you know that was what it, even even from the standpoint of of whether it was anti-aging or it was the food you ate or whatever. And and I think that's a it's a dangerous trend we have in this country with the marketing in Madison Avenue is that we um we 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 don't convey to to people to work on themselves enough, and it's not all about the I think the right word is the ethereal look that we have you know the exterior look but it's what we become and it, it's the progress we make I think it's so important you know in in my before and after pictures I really have tried to get away from the guys that were really fat and then they come down and they look like you know look like an adonis kind of deal uh, i yeah. want people to understand that th- this road to fitness is a journey that is each week you get a little better not each week it's a miraculous change because there's going to be times when you step back you know my favorite my favorite uh, uh story to people about goal setting is that you know they had the smartest scientists in the world they had the biggest computers in the world they had every dollar that the american the american government could put together to put a man on the moon and they they did all this planning for five years they launched the apollo project and as they're going up on the apollo project what happens is they check they check their pathway every fifteen minutes if they're on track and so they can make corrections and they were off track ninety eight percent of the time yet they succeeded in getting to the moon getting the man there there and back safely and and i hope that I hope that people understand because they'll look at this magazine that you have and and they they might get lost in the pictures but I want them to get lost in reading these articles that bring to them fitness is a is is a, a, a project that you do at your own pace and I think this is the true message of your thing and there are people out there to motivate you and and I hope people will will accept that message and not turn away from the magazine because they oh it's just a bunch of young kids they're showing off how good and fit they are. It, it's, right. I mean we want some selfies from people who are on their journey and I think that's the the more of those selfies that go to your Facebook page and stuff the the better that's going to be because people should be proud of the progress they make. Don't but just because someone uh, you know I I'm not intimidated because. A lot of my friends were world champions or gold medals. I'm not intimidated. I was never a gold a gold medalist. I I did what I did, and I'm and I'm happy with what I did, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to have them as friends and and people to motivate me and and coach me along the way. And I think that that's that's something that's very very important that we understand with people. And I think that your me- that your message that you're truly trying to convey in the, in the magazine is one of those messages. Absolutely right. Um, my message for for Daytona Beach through this magazine is that you don't have to be under 10% body fat. You don't have to be the strongest man in the room. Uh, my message is just live a healthy lifestyle. Um, just trying to show people the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle, which to me means that you monitor what you eat and you eat healthy amounts. Um, like you said, with the same thing with uh, your your message of nutrition with between you and Dr. Demuga, don't drop down to 600, 700 calories to lose weight. That's not that's not healthy. Yeah, you may lose weight, but that's not safe. Um, so proper nutrition and, and a little bit of exercise goes a long way when you're consistent. And, and you know, it's, it's, back, it's back to the, 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 the synergy that we promote at Bodies, and, and whether it's reversing the, 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 the continuum of disease and getting people from their, from their uh, doctor's office and lots of medications back to good health or it's mm-hmm. taking an elite athlete and making better. It's the same, it's the same synergy. It is attention is- to building muscle, moderate aerobic exercise, and good nutrition. And everybody okay. is going to be on that journey to where they can do that triangle of things that are going to help them. And then the second triangle becomes the balance 
of the brain, the gut, and the immune system. And the third triangle you're going to hear us talking about this year, there's one I'm just starting to develop, is the balance of the body, the mind. And rather than talking about the spirit, we're going to talk about the integrity of the cell, the in intelligence, the integrity, and, and how that cell is able to interact in the body. Because if there's an imbalance between the, the, the systems in the body and that cell integrity cannot interact with other cells or with other systems, then what we have is we have a disease situation starting to occur because of inflammation. So those, those are the three triangles we'll talk about this year. And it's, it's sort of like we've drummed down from this. The original triangle was the triangle that was, hey, listen, we want to we want to have good nutrition and we want to have a moderate aerobic exercise and we, have, and we want to have um, attention to building muscle. And then we talked about, hey, there has to be, to do this, there has to be a balance of the brain, the gut, and the immune system. And now the third triangle that I'm going to introduce this year is going to be the cell, the cellular level health, the body's health, and the, the the mind's health, all being pulled together from that standpoint. And it's it's just you know it's a little a little different than hey listen we're going to do a set of abs and triceps and biceps. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. No, that's that, that's great, and and that's why you're successful, Tom. So is that science based training approach. Hey Jim, tell them where great. they can get your magazine and tell them about your Facebook page. Absolutely. Um, so our Facebook page now has just surpassed 5,600 people in the area. Um, lo the locals have really taken off to it. We'd love to have uh, as many people on that page as we can so we can help make Daytona healthy. And the magazine, the print version itself, can be found in most of the public locations here in the greater Daytona area, from Ormond down to Port Orange. All right, and here's a quote for your, uh, for your Facebook page today uh, in honor of July 4th. Freedom, freedom is nothing else but a chance to be better. By Albert Camus made that statement. So I think that certainly goes with the theme of your magazine, your Facebook, and uh, everything we do. So I hope you have a great day, Jim. Continue good success to the, the Fit in Daytona magazine. And I hope people uh, support you. I hope it motivates them, and I hope it helps people take their journey and uh, their health to t get themselves off of disease medications and to get in a situation where they understand the value of that first triangle, that first uh, synergy of uh, getting the body healthy, and that is to strength train, resistance train, to get stronger and build muscle, moderate aerobic exercise, not marathons, but, you know, six to ten minute rout routines of burst training like we do at Bodies and good nutrition, whether that good nutrition is that you shop at Love's only or that you don't you don't eat fast foods. Whatever you have to start your journey on, that's where you start. So thanks for joining me today, Jim, uh, and standing in for the last uh, last 20 minutes with me to fill the sure. show. I appreciate your uh, input. Thank and you, again, continued Happy success. Happy Fourth of July to everyone. All right, buddy. God bless. Thanks. And Dave, I want one more yep. shout-out and thanks to my friend Dr. Lorenzo Fon and to Rod Gould and the Kalins Furniture Group for supporting us at Bodies in the, in the Fitness Friday radio show. God bless all of you. Have a safe Thanks weekend. Thanks to Bill Elliott for joining Bill, the show Bill today. Elliott, and listen, everybody get out there and get those number nines out there for that Napa, that Napa Chevy. We'll see Chase Elliott in Victory Circle. I'll be right there with him if God grants me that, that power to be there. See y'all. God bless. Daytona's news, Daytona's weather, and Daytona's traffic can only be found on Daytona's morning news station. AM 1150 WNDB, Daytona Beach.